I've had enough of cleaning Swarf Adelaide's. Let's go and make a video. Was off a bit before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away, looking good. G'day, I'm Phil from PhilTech, and in this video, we're going to talk some more about the Leslie V12 engine. In the last video on this series, we we're up to the point where we couldn't resolve the cooling issues of the air cooled version, so I think we need to go back and reflect on our original objectives. We wanted an engine that was suitable to fit into a P51 Mustang to have the power to fly that aircraft. It needed to look a little bit like a Rolls-Royce Merlin and have as realistic a sound as you can get considering we don't have a 27 litre engine. And finally, we needed to keep in mind the manufacturing costs. So. I think the obvious move next is to go for a liquid cooled version of the Leslie V12 engine. The first thing to go is obviously all the cooling fins. We uh, found that the gearbox, the reduction gearbox was a great success and similar the electric starter mechanism at the back. That worked really flawlessly. At this stage we're going to persist with the fuel injection it still needs a bit more work. We like the slider throttle, the electric fuel pump, that seems to be working quite reliably. This is the electronic management system. It controls the fuel injection system. It also runs the glow driver to power the 12 glow plugs. We'll be keeping this for now. This is the first of the liquid cooled prototypes. The most significant change was with the crankcase. On the air cooled one, you can see that we'd made it in one piece with just the cylinder head screwing on the top. But with the water cooled one, we wanted to make a, a water jacket part around the uh, uh, center section. So we split the casing lower down you can see that there we decided to make the water jacket in one piece so we still had a modular crankcase but we had a single piece water jacket and a single piece head and we wanted to still have a decorative rocket cover on the top so it gave it that Rolls Royce Merlin look so we went with angled glow plugs here because I couldn't work out how to get access to the glow plugs if normally they're in the centre. Uh, so essentially the rest of the engine was much the same. So how did it go when we gave it a test? Well it was a bit of a disaster. The one piece cylinder head warped, it leaked water, the angled glow plugs didn't ignite the combustion properly. We can see here on the one piece cylinder head the angled plug. That was a complete failure because it didn't ignite the fuel properly. It needs to be in the centre of the hemisphere. The water pump wasn't powerful enough. This is the one piece water jacket. We tried sealing up the cavities with glue, but this turned out to be problematic, had little bubbles, sometimes broke away and leaked. Definitely not the answer. I think it was back to the drawing board. So here we have Essentially, the second prototype of the liquid cooled V12 engine. It's had some significant changes, as you can see. Firstly, the crankcase is kept essentially very similar, just a few little modifications, but we got rid of the one piece 
water jacket and cylinder head and made individual ones. Then we pipe the water in through a manifold here on the inside. We kept the one piece rocket cover just to make it look like it's a single entity. So here we have a close up of the new cooling system. So we have the cool water coming back from the radiator entering here at the bottom across along this manifold. It enters into the water jacket at each individual cylinder, passes it through the water jacket up into the cylinder head and then exits via this other manifold. Comes back to a a joining part of the manifold here, out here, and back to the header tank. A significant change also is the fuel delivery system. We've decided to set aside the fuel injection system as it's beyond the resources of fuel tech to get it to a production state. At this, I understand mechanical stuff, but electronics is a complete mystery. And we've replaced it with six very complicated carburetors. The keeping it simple idea didn't last very long, did it? Firstly, the carburetors have a servo operated mixture control system, so you can actually move your needle in and out via a servo. Secondly, because we've got a pressurized fuel rail delivering the fuel, we've got to add a diaphragm operated needle and seat so that only when the carburetor sucks does it operate the needle and seat via the diaphragm. So quite a complex system but it is reliable and we can manufacture that here at FuelTech. Now that we're not using the fuel injection electronic management system we needed to organise some new electronics to power the glow plugs. Thanks to Peter Clark, we've come up with a new unit. How did we go getting from the first prototype to the second prototype? We went through many iterations to get here. Let's look at some of the issues that we had along the way. Now that we could run the engine at full throttle for sustained periods of time, we found what was vulnerable on the engine that could break. For instance, crankshafts. We had a few of those break. We had uh, some catastrophic failures with pistons completely mulched up. Bent conrods. Even a steel liner got a big chunk taken out of it. But that's all behind us now. This is the version of the engine that powered the model Mustang for the first test flight. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we've turned the prototype engine into a, an engine that you will be able to purchase. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and like. Otherwise, see you next time.